Hey, one and all. Apologies, I uh, haven't made a video in a little while because a lot of what I do here is kind of routine and you've seen it all before in other videos. But I just wanted to remind everybody that in the previous video I had talked about uh, the critical alignment between the camshaft and the oil pump. Here's another FE290 that came in. Uh, the customer had taken it to another shop. They had... Uh, bungled up the alignment between the cam and the oil pump, torqued on the engine side cover, which forced the cam into the oil pump uh, cover and uh, spacer plate. And of course, that destroyed the functionality of the oil pump, which in turn destroyed the crankshaft and the connecting rod and uh, link arms and bushings, etc. So just, you know, once again, just a reminder, uh, you've got to put that cam in. If you're unsure, just put the short block together, put the cam in, get the side cover torqued on and then move around to the flywheel side and install the oil pump group. Uh, if there's any question, at least you know you've done it correctly. Another thing that I wanted to bring up is, um, as this engine had come from the previous shop, I noticed the oil pump spring was almost 900 thousandths. And, uh, you know, people have thought that, well, you know, if, if you know, a little over 700 thousandths is okay, how about 900 thousandths will have more oil pressure? The problem with that is, is that there's a purposeful bypass built in. Guys have called me many times and said, I noticed there's clearance between the check ball and the spring. And in theory, pressure results from there's a restriction to flow and a relief valve should function in such a way that the uh, the ball would only be checked when the, the previous set pressure is there. But in our case, we have some bypass flow and that helps us prime an FE series oil pump. If we've got uh, a perfect oil pump, we can shim the oil pump spring and actually create a little more oil pressure. Not that we need it, but it's possible. If the oil pump's a little bit bad, a little bit worn, or in this case, completely foobarred because of the uh, the previous insulation, you're adding insult to injury by trying to shim the uh, the oil pressure relief spring and you know basically precluding the engine from being able to prime the oil pump because our theoretical inlet condition isn't meant in the sense that the oil isn't flooding the intake of the oil pump, it's slightly below, so we're creating a little bit of a negative pressure to pull it up. Now, um, moving on from there, that's just a reminder from another video. You guys may rebuild engines and start them on the bench like I have here, and they're going to find their, you know, that they don't run very well, and they're going to start second-guessing themselves. Just a reminder that the FE Series engine does require a little bit of... Um, Restriction to air, air inlet airflow. That's the jetting is sort of designed to correspond with the air filter, etc. So we've built a little adapter that's adjustable. This little, I'm just reaching around here, this little guy can loosen off and we can change the size of this orifice to be uh, like a, a choke or to just create that little bit of air inlet restriction that uh, will keep the carburetor happy. So if you've got an engine on the bench uh, similar to this, this isn't our fancy dyno or anything anymore. This is just running on a simple bench, starting with a drill, uh, and the engine isn't performing very well. That is, it can't pick up its own bootstraps after a little bit of throttle opening. It's probably because you don't have any air inlet restriction. Um, so don't worry about that. You can you could create that air inlet restriction with maybe a little bit of duct tape or something. But, uh, you know, just create a, a half cover, the, the OEM uh, hose adapter, like this guy here, you could just maybe partially block that opening and you could create that little bit of restriction to airflow and then you'll find the, the engine runs well on the bench. So anyways, um, just on this subject of oil pressure, of course, when we bench run engines, we test the oil pressure, the, the theoretical oil pressure for kind of any engine, uh, you know, generally speaking, would be about a minimum of 10 pounds per thousand uh, 10 pounds per square inch per thousand of engine RPM. You'll notice when I cold start this engine, it is cold as a cucumber. Uh, we're going to create about 60 pounds of oil pressure, and you'll find these things make about 40 pounds of oil pressure at 2600, which is more than adequate to run the engine. So I'm just going to quickly fire it up with the drill, let you guys have a look at the oil pressure gauge, and uh, kind of dissuade anybody from trying to shim an FE oil uh, pressure relief spring because it will just give you the opposite effect by negating the ability of the oil pump to prime. So in the next shot, this thing will be running. So I've got this uh, little FE running. I'm just going to move the shim off the bench. It's dancing around here. But uh, you'll see that our oil pressure is right up around 60. And as I say, that'll tame down to about 40 when this thing warms up. So there really is no reason to shim that oil pressure spring. It's just totally unnecessary. 
secondary. Uh, the bypass is there for a reason. The check ball isn't up against the seat for a reason. It's there to prime the oil pump. So I just thought it's important that you guys know that. And uh, anyways, over and out for now. Thanks for watching.